I have received a letter from the honourable member for Greenway proposing that a definite matter of public importance be submitted to the House for discussion, namely the government's second-rate NBN failing Australians. I call upon those honourable members who approve of the proposed discussion to rise in their places, and I call the honourable member for Greenway. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Few things better exemplify this Prime Minister being all talk, all spin, all buzzwords, but no delivery than his failed national broadband network. Mr Speaker, the disappointment felt by Australians in this Prime Minister, who promised so much but delivered so little on the national broadband network, is truly something to behold. And today in this parliament, we had the Prime Minister ask two questions, and his responses say it all. On the first, he is challenged on the fact that he promoted particular technologies over others, that he would somehow be able to deliver with his multi-technology mix, MTM, or Malcolm Turnbull's mess as we know it, that he would somehow deliver the holy trinity of promises faster, sooner and more affordable. On each count, it has been fail, fail, fail. On each count, he has let the Australian people down. I note, Mr Speaker, that my specific question about his bungling of HFC, in his answer, he did not refer once to HFC because he was completely incapable of defending the mess that he has made in this area. And in respect to the member for Cow Ann's question, he gave his typical condescending response, basically saying the voters of Cow Ann got it wrong gave the lecture, the lecture he loves to give about how he knows everything. But what he is missing, Mr Speaker, is the knowledge that we on this side of the House have, and that is the lived experience of our constituents, the lived experience of those people we represent who have been let down, who are living in broadband backwaters, who can't in many cases even get basic internet standards. And it took three years three years of dictation from his then leader, whom he despised, the member for Warringah. He gave him a remit to destroy the national broadband network. And who will ever forget that unedifying spectacle of the then Prime Minister Abbott with his communications minister and supposedly Awkward. Sonny Bill Williams announcing, announcing that by 2016, every Australian would have minimum broadband speeds. Well, Mr Speaker, he's got 81 days, 81 days to go. So good luck, as he just said in his answer earlier today. There are just over one million premises connected, only seven million to go. Seven million to go in 81 days. So when this, when this Prime Minister came to office, he knew, he knew that he would not be able to deliver on these promises that he made in this area. But he persisted with them. He persisted with them to all ends. And we knew, we knew that when Labor was in government, we needed to deliver, deliver a future-proof set of infrastructure for the 21st century and beyond, the best infrastructure that we could provide. And what this shows in this Prime Minister in ignoring that is every single assumption that has gone into his mess has been proven utterly wrong, utterly wrong in every respect. But you don't need to take it from me, Mr Speaker. You can take it from the then Senator Barnaby Joyce and Senator Fiona Nash, who's now a minister in this area. Because on the 7th of April 2009, when Labor was announcing the NBN, they claimed credit for it. In fact, they said the NBN stood for the Nationals Broadband Network the Nationals Broadband Network. And I quote, the plan from them was to roll out fibre optic cable. Rolling out fibre optic infrastructure across Australia would be like a glass snowy. Well, let's look at what else uh, Senator Nash had to say about copper, the uh, current government's preferred form of delivery mechanism. The copper age, this is Senator Nash, was 5,300 years ago and that's where copper belongs. Yeah. We need to embrace fibre optic, wireless and satellite. 
so that we have the right mix of infrastructure to take us into the future. And I will give her even more credit. I'll give Senator Nash even more credit because she labelled she labelled anything which was fibre to the node as broadband. It is widely understood in the telecommunications industry that fibre to the node will not deliver improved broadband speeds to rural and regional areas. Now, those opposite—and I see the minister here at the table ready to have a go—I know those opposite are very keen to point out what they would see as the evidence, what they would see as uh, the evidence to show that their plan is working. Well, let's have a look at what the minister at the table had to say in June 2011 about fibre. He talked about how Japan, for example, which had 55 per cent of its total broadband services delivered over fibre, actually doesn't rate that well and is only two places ahead of Australia in the internet speed rankings. Well, let's look at where Australia is today. So at the time, as I said, he quotes the OECD figures, Japan favouring fibre, only two slots ahead of Australia. Today, Australia is rated on the Akamai Broadband Speed Rankings as 56. Japan is number seven. Japan is number seven. Australia languishing in 56th spot. And where were we? Where did we stand in 2013 when Labor left office? We were 30th. On this Prime Minister's watch, Australia actually dropped to 60th in the world, beaten by an array of other countries, including most of them in our region. But few things, Mr Deputy Speaker, typify this Prime Minister's utter, utter duplicity on the national broadband network. Those opposite, and the Prime Minister in particular, hailing the NBN satellites as a great game changer, the second one being launched last week. A great game changer. But what did he say in 2012 when Labor commissioned these satellites? I'll tell you what he said. More wasteful NBN spending. And he called them a Rolls-Royce solution. And not only that, he advocated leasing capacity from a third-party satellite provider. Such is this guy's business acumen. You know what happened to that satellite provider? It went bankrupt. It went bankrupt. Such is the business acumen of this Prime Minister. So not content with the duplicity in this area. This Prime Minister is now stuffing up the connection process for the NBN. We've had retail service providers on the NBN, using the NBN satellites reporting how they have connected around 10,000 customers, Activate Me for example, but has 24,000 customers waiting to be activated because this government had three years with its own hand-picked team to work out how they were going to do activations and they have completely stuffed it up. You listen to anyone in rural Australia who has been trying to connect to Skymuster. The fact is Labor put those birds up in the sky. It is this government that is letting them down with a third-rate connection process, denying them what would end up being the great ending of the digital divide uh, when it comes to broadband access. And again, Mr Deputy Speaker, the people of Australia know this. Last week we had the release of the essential poll as to who has the best NBN. The Labor plan rated 42 per cent. What did the Liberal government's plan rate? A measly 27 per cent. 27 per cent. But even more worrying for this government and something they should take note of was the number of Liberal voters who think their policy is rubbish. The number of Liberal voters who think their policy is absolute rubbish. Now, Mr. De Mr. Uh, Deputy Speaker, I point to the fact that under Labor's NBN, we were able to deliver real transformational change in terms of small businesses, in terms of education, in terms of health care. And few things typify this better than in my own electorate with a company called the Good Egg Studio that's set up in Riverston, which was the site of the first Sydney Metro rollout. And as they have shown, and I quote from Warren Kirby, the proprietor, we have the full fibre to the premises model, and it works so well. We can run our business from here without any problem. So this government, what is it actually delivered? It's not delivered faster, sooner and more affordable. It's slow, it's expensive, it's obsolete. And we have a situation, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, where the residents of Australia, they know what they want. 
They know what they want out of their broadband services, and they are not afraid to demand it. Just last week before last, I was in Perth uh, with the member for Perth and a number of other of our Western Australia members. And on a wet and windy night, we had over 120 people come to a forum to demand a real broadband network. They know that the state of the copper is such that they won't get what they need through this. So, Mr Deputy Speaker, you don't have to take it from me. If this government would end up listening to their own constituents, they would know that they are not delivering for the Australian Order. people. Order. I call the Minister for Urban Infrastructure. I will thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. Well, is there a more depressing job than being Labor's Shadow Minister for Communications, trying to defend Labor's disastrous record of NBN incompetence, trying to distract people from the relentless and ever-increasing NBN rollout? Now, the member for Blacksland dutifully performed this thankless task for three years, trying to be continually gloomy as the light of broadband availability shone ever more brightly across the land. On the 17th of September 2015, on the, on the 17th of September 2015, he brought forward a matter of public importance debate, quotes the Prime Minister's mismanagement of the NBN. At that time there were 1,291,635 premises that were able to connect. He had another go on the 21st of October 2015, quotes the Prime Minister's second rate NBN was the topic of the MBI that he brought forward then, Mr Deputy Speaker. At that time, 1,374,408 premises able to connect. He didn't give up. He was persistent, even in the face of the facts. On 10 February 2016, he brought forward yet another MPI, quotes the Prime Minister's failing Australians with his second-rate NBN close quotes, again the member for Blacksland determinedly running the ideological line in the face of all the evidence because by that point, Mr Deputy Speaker, the number of premises that could connect was 1,719,122. And you'll note, as each MPI comes past, the number by which the number of premises has increased by many thousands. So by the 3rd of May 2016, there was the dutiful old member for Blacksland still trying to ignore the ever better story in the NBN, still trying to tell, tell a very different story, and he brought forward yet another MPI. And then his topic, Mr Deputy Speaker, was the government's failure to deliver on the NBN for Australians. Now at that point, there were 2,428,606 premises which were able to connect. Now, the member for Blacksland naturally couldn't wait to get this smelly dead cat of a shadow portfolio off of his shoulders. And finally, he's escaped and he's happily off doing trade, investment and resources. And there's this new shadow minister, the member for Greenway, full of enthusiasm, full of clever new ideas, bold new ideas, like having an MPI on the topic, quotes, the government's second-rate NBN failing Australians, close quotes. Uh, unfortunately, if we now look at the numbers, there's 3,207,727 premises able to connect, Mr Deputy Speaker. So the facts are that the number of premises which can connect is increasing rapidly and remorselessly, even as Labor, with their ideological blinkers, tries to, tries to cling to a set of facts which are utterly different to the reality. The reality, Mr Deputy Speaker, is this, that Labor has a hopeless track record on delivery, including a particularly hopeless track record on the delivery of the national broadband network. The reality is that the coalition came to government with a clear plan. We are executing on that plan and we are getting the NBN rolled out. And the third reality is that Labor has no clue what they're going to do about the NBN, as we saw demonstrated comprehensively during the 2016 election. Let's remind ourselves, Mr Deputy Speaker, of Labor's record on delivery. Labor's record on delivery across a whole range of areas. How many how many naval ships or submarines did Labor order in government? None. Remember the member for Lilly. Let's talk about delivery. The member for Lilly coming into this place and saying the four years of surpluses I announced tonight. How many were delivered there? None. What did he deliver? Absolutely nothing. Remember Fuel Watch and Grocery Watch. What was delivered there? Nothing. Remember the housing, the housing insulation program. Sadly, we know what was delivered there, and that was tragic. Tragically, four young Australians died. Hundreds of houses burnt because of this 
Labor Party's hopeless track record of delivery. Remember the mining tax, the tax that delivered no revenue. Remember the GP super clinics. At the 2010 election, they promised there were going to be 28. There was one operational. Remember ending the double drop-off. In the 2007 election, they promised 260 childcare centres, the double drop-off, delivered by that public policy genius, the member for Adelaide. How many of those 260 had been built by February 2010? Three. This no. is the Labor Party with their track record of being utterly hopeless at delivery. And when it comes to the national broadband network, they were on form. They were on song. They produced a delivery stuff up right up there with the levels of excellence in all of the other portfolios. Let's remember what they announced, what they promised in 2007, the 2007 election. There is going to be a fibre of the node network to 98 per cent of the population, uh, and it was going to be delivered in partnership with the private sector. They couldn't deliver it. Abject, ignominious failure. So in April 2009, there was another plan fibre to the premises it was going to be, 12.2 million premises, but again, don't worry, there was going to be private sector involvement. Of course, by 2010, they discreetly slipped out the news that the private sector consultants they'd retained, uh, McKinsey and KPMG, had said, uh, actually, no, the private sector won't be touching this with a barge pole, so the taxpayer is up for every dollar of the national broadband network. That's just one other example of Labor's delivery incompetence. And what did they actually deliver by September 2013 when they shuffled crippledly off the national stage and left us to pick up their mess? I will tell you, I will tell you what they had delivered. They had spent six billion dollars and they had connected barely fifty thousand premises. That is an ignominious record of incompetence, an ignominious record of hopelessness at delivery. We inherited, Mr Deputy Speaker, this chaotic, shambolic mess from this pack of incompetence on the other side, and we were charged with setting, a, setting about and getting it under control. We established the competent management team. Bizarrely, there was virtually nobody on the NBN board under the previous government who actually had any familiarity with telecommunications. That's why we put in Ziggy Switkowski, former chief executive of Optus, former chief executive of Telstra, one of the most experienced telecommunications executives in Australia. We put in Bill Morrow as the chief executive, again a very experienced telecommunications executive. We developed a credible plan out of the shambles that we inherited. We developed the multi-technology mix to use the most cost-effective combination of fibre to the premises, fibre to the node and HFC cable, rolled out faster and more affordable, limiting public in investment to $29.5 billion, and yet 90 per cent of fixed-line premises will get 50 megabits per second. How have we operated once we've been uh, once we came to government and once we've had control of NBN. There has been transparency. There has been weekly reporting on the rollout because we've got nothing to hide, unlike the previous government. And what we now see is that for seven quarters in a row, for seven quarters in a row, the National Broadband Network has met its delivery targets and its financial targets. How many times did that happen under the previous Labor government? Not once. Not once. So this shambolic pack of people who are completely incompetent at delivery, the Labor Party, bizarrely keep coming back to this topic, topic rather than slinking away from it in shame, which is what they frankly ought to be doing. And what did we see, Mr Deputy Speaker, what did we see during the 2016 election? After all kinds of chest beating and bold promises on the NBN, they were going to fix it all, they were going to deliver fibre to the premises everywhere, it was going to be fantastic. What did they actually announce as a policy? Listen to this, Mr Deputy Speaker, because it's pretty good. It's pretty good. They were going to spend not one dollar more than us, not one dollar more than the coalition. But, 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 here's a good bit. They were going to give two million more fibre to the premises, homes connected. Little factoid, little factoid for the Labor Party. The fibre to the premises home costs $4,400. These are numbers from the corporate plan. $4,400. Fibre to the node costs $2,300, roughly half. And yet our friends in the Labor Party, 
These people, with this chaotic record of incompetence in the NBN, thought it was a good idea to tell the Australian people that their plan for the NBN in 2016 was to spend not one more dollar, but you could have two million more fibre to the premises homes. It just doesn't work. It was a completely incredible, completely implausible policy because the frank reality was, as they effectively admitted by putting that policy out, they had no idea what to do. Thankfully for the Australian people, there is a government which is committed to the NBN, which is committed to delivering the NBN, which is populated by people who have serious business experience, which has put in place a competent management team, which has a credible plan and which is systematically rolling out the national broadband network. That is what we are doing. It's a story of success. There's a lot more to do. We're doing the job. We are delivering. I call the member for Whitlam. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Well, in question time today, we saw the Prime Minister um, in his amateur theatrical mode make a huge song and dance about their great successes in rolling out the national broadband network, Deputy Speaker. Well, right around the country, you could see people, you could hear people switching off their television sets, Deputy Speaker, because there is a huge gap between what the Prime Minister thinks is the reality when it comes to the rollout of the NBN and the lived reality of people in their homes right around the country, Deputy Speaker. And I've got to say, for a bloke who's alleged to have invented the internet, he's doing a very good job at stuffing up the rollout of the NBN. He promised us before the last election that he was going to deliver the NBN and it was going to be faster, it was going to be cheaper and it was going to be delivered to our household sooner. In fact, he promised us that the NBN was going to be rolled out to every premise in Australia when? Before the end of this year, the, before the end of this year Deputy Speaker. Before the end of this year. Now I'm looking at you and I'm pretty sure it hasn't been rolled out to your house yet, this Deputy Speaker. It hasn't been rolled out to mine. And I'm ask? sure all the people around the country are listening to this today, Deputy Speaker. The vast majority of them are yet to see an NBN truck roll down their street. So so much for doing it faster, Deputy Speaker. Well, let's look at the other the other claims that he made. He promised he was going to be able to do it, uh, deliver faster broadband, and every household was going to be getting 25 megabits per second, Deputy Speaker. Well, I know, as a matter of fact, Deputy Speaker, in those places around the country, and the vast majority of those places around the country that have got the uh, NBN connected by the Prime Minister's second-rate fibre-to-the-node uh, model, are getting nothing like 25 megabits per second, That's Deputy right. Speaker. They'd be lucky if they're getting that in the middle of the night when nobody else is in the suburb or nobody's doing any homework or nobody's doing any business, Deputy Speaker. He promised he was going to do it cheaper. Well, let's have a look at that. He promised that he was going to be able to deliver his first big promise, and he's big on making big promises, Deputy Speaker, big on making the grand statement. He promised that he was going to be able to deliver it for $29.5 billion. That was in 2013. Uh, by the end of 2013, Deputy Speaker, he made the promise of $29 million in April 20, uh, 2013. By the end of 2013, Deputy Speaker, in, in December 2013, that cost had blown out to $41 billion. It would be bad enough if it stopped there, Deputy Speaker, but before we got to the last election, the total cost of this second-rate NBN was going to be $56 billion, Deputy Speaker. Billion. Now, you've got to ask yourself, how does a guy who's supposed to have the business acumen that Malcolm Turnbull, that the Prime Minister, prides himself on, how does a guy manage to see a blowout of this proportion? There are lots of places that you can look, Deputy Speaker, but one that really bells the cat, the one that really shines the light on why this guy has stuffed it up so much is if you look at what he's done with the copper network, Deputy Speaker. Now, as I've got around the country and I visited uh, many uh, of the regional towns throughout Australia in the last uh, election, Deputy Speaker, from Cairns in the north and Townsville down to Hobart and Launceston in the south, Deputy Speaker, right throughout regional New South Wales, I had the pleasure of visiting your electorate, Deputy Speaker, and out through uh, Adelaide and Victoria as well, Deputy Speaker. And it wasn't unusual when I visited a town. And I go and talk to people about the state of their network to be shown pits that look like this, Deputy Shame. Speaker. To be shown story. pits that look like this, Deputy Speaker. I will Speaker. remind the member for Whitlam about the and use of props. The picture that I am um, unfolding, uh, Deputy Speaker, and looking at is the state of the copper network. This happens to be uh, in uh, the Hunter Valley, Deputy Speaker, but it could have been in any place throughout the country. Uh, you ask yourself 
uh, why the Prime Minister, in his fibre to the node, uh, is spending so much on copper, because this is the state of the network. This is a guy who spent close to half a billion dollars on copper, Deputy Speaker. Copper, last, last century's uh, technology to deliver this century's national broadband network. Now, Deputy Speaker, um, in the old days, it was education, it was health, it was welfare that were the big levers that you pulled down upon uh, to deliver more equity in this country. In this century, it's going to be broadband. And it's in regional Australia where the Prime Minister and this government is failing us so much. Uh, we've seen study after study showing the failure of the government to be delivering the basic services such as the National Broadband Network and basic infrastructure services as leading to a growing gap in inequality in this country. And this government has got absolutely no plan to do anything about it. We've seen a study from the Swinburne Institute uh, only last month which compared uh, the digital inclusion of people living in the country, in fact living right around the country, and it short showed huge gaps, Deputy Speaker. It showed huge gaps between people living Order. in the regions Order. and living the in the cities. The member's time has expired. I call the member for Petrie. Well, thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. It's great to be able to talk on this MPI today. And you've got to laugh when people like the member for Whitlam want to talk about their record on NBN when Labor had such an abysmal record on NBN between 2007 and 2013, where the member for Whitlam was part of that government and part of the decisions that caused to the chaos that resulted in such a disastrous MBN system that we had to clean up. I mean, the rollout was so badly managed by Labor that they missed every single target they set for themselves. They set targets and missed every single one of them. Imagine if you did that in business. You'd be going broke. Under Labor, taxpayers paid more than $6 billion for the MBN to roll out. And have a guess how many Australians at premises that passed. 3 per cent. 3 per cent. Labor's NBN pa passed just one in 50 premises. We're now at one in, one in four. I could go on and on and on. But the fact is, is that Labor's record is appalling. And part of the problem is because they weren't focused on the people and they're more focused on the politics. And when you look at their, their, their fibre to the premise solution, it wasn't really a fibre to the premise solution. It was fibre to the press release. Fibre to the press release, and what that resulted in, and what that resulted in, is in places in my electorate, in a in a suburb in my electorate, particularly in North Lakes, in my electorate, that resulted in disastrous telecommunications for people for years to come afterwards, because of Labor's fibre to the press release, and what it tells for other companies do, NBNs come in, we won't bother putting anything in, because Labor's bringing it in. They were also, the rollout was also, I believe, politically motivated in parts of marginal seats, particularly in the southern end of my seat, right on the border of Petrie and Lilly, from, from Labor members there. So their, their rollout was not done for the benefit of people, but for the benefit of the Labor Party. The budget blowouts, higher debt and fibre to the premise would have, of course, resulted in residents receiving MBN some six to eight years later. And in the world we're living in, where businesses need uh, internet connectivity as fast as possible, this is very important. As I say, one in, one in 50 premises connected under Labor, we're now three years into our term, we're now at one in four, and at my electorate, almost one in half. And to the new members opposite, if you want to get things done, don't listen to your shadow minister, don't listen to the negativity that we've seen from Labor on this issue at the 2013 election that they lost and now the 2016 election that they lost, because in three years' time most of the country is going to be done. That's the goal that we need to set for ourselves. That's the goal I set for myself, and that's what I do. I go and talk to the shadow minister. So if members opposite have problem suburbs and their electorate, they should go and talk to the minister. It's OK. It doesn't matter if it's a coalition minister. You can get up and go and see them. Don't listen to your shadow minister. That's what I'd encourage you to do. But you know, the very first minister that I invited into my electorate uh, when I was campaigning for the 2013 election was the Shadow Minister for Communications and now, of course, the Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull, because I know that the internet and communications is very important for my electorate. And I'm very proud to announce that in less than six months, in the last six months, almost 20,000 households in Redcliffe have been connected to the MBN or ready to be connected. And, there's been a four, and a build has begun on another 4,000 houses in Scarborough. Premises ready for service is close to 30,000. 
but there's about 10,500 that actually have an active service. So as MPs and as senators in the other place, rather than being negative when the debate's been lost at the last two elections, we need to be encouraging people to actually take up an NBN connection and actually connect to the NBN. That's what I'd be saying. I know as well that you know, I spoke about North Lakes before having a major issue, uh, and I'm very pleased to say that right now that people, the build is commencing. Right now, there is, there, the build is commencing. Uh, cables are being laid in places like Copeland Drive, Discovery Drive, Lakeland Field Drive, Memorial Drive, Anzac Avenue and parts of Bounty Boulevard, Tuckaroo Parade and Dever Boulevard, Freshwater Creek Road, Halpine Drive and more. There's a lot more work to be done, but this NBN is about the, about the people. As a government that has prioritised jobs and growth, because that's what we know that people are interested in, and stability, we need to be encouraging the NBN Co to roll out the service as quickly and efficiently as possible for all Australians to benefit. I call the member for Patterson. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. And the member is completely right. This is about people. And last week, Labor's spokesperson on communications, Stephen Jones, the member for Whitlam, joined me at my electorate of Paterson to meet with people, real, everyday people, who are, I've written here, having problems. They're actually not having problems. It's a nightmare what they're going through. They came and they told us about this second-rate national broadband network. Stephen and I visited an early links inclusion service, a not-for-profit doing critical work with children with disabilities and high needs in my community in the suburb of Ashtonfield. It's a support service. They care for children who have very high disabilities. They operate from a council-owned building and they are struggling with the most basic of internet needs. When parents phone to try and make an appointment for their children, guess what? They can't get onto the internet to make an appointment. Shame. They try to access files for the children, can't get them. Then they try and report for the NDIS, which is in a whole world of pain that we won't go into now. Guess what? They can't get onto the internet to do it. So they divert precious resources, money, to go out and buy dongles so they can just do this basic work. But here is where the injury uh, and the insult really come together. They've had a box on the wall that they should be connected up to the NBN with, but it's not connected. What is that about? It's absolutely disgusting. We've looked at the box. We had a photograph taken with it. That's all you can do because it's not useful. It's not connecting anyone to anything. It's a pretty little prop box on the wall. And one staff member at this establishment, she's a single mum, absolutely fantastic person, does great work for Early Links. She told me that she spends $300 a month on mobile broadband for her two teenagers doing their high school work because they can't even get ADSL in her part of Thornton. $300 a month. And I've only been a member for a short time, but I can tell you my office is inundated every day with complaints. People like Chris Lindis from Aberglasson. MBO, MBN web, website says that the address is ready to connect, but all of the internet service providers say the property is not ready to connect. Some neighbours are able to connect, but not Chris. And he says uh, he's currently on very slow ADSL. Or what about Jackie Edsa, also from Aberglasson? Same story as Chris. However, she's been told by NBN Co that only has to have 90 per cent of the suburb ready before they can declare that it is actually ready for service. So 90 per cent is OK. Don't worry about the other 10. And they just sort of say it's you know, a little bit of froth and bubble there. What about our poor old Angela Nisnik from Chisholm? No access to the NBN at all. And it's not on the build plan. The other half of the suburb is already connected. So we talk about the digital divide. Earlier in the day, the member for Whitlam and I, we went to Fern Bay and Fullerton Cove. And they can't get mobile service there, even though they're only 10 kilometres from Newcastle, Australia's seventh largest city. Sometimes one resident in the gorgeous over 55s development 
that we visited said that she can get one bar of signal if she stands on the kitchen sink and holds the phone above the Venetians. But her husband's got a dodgy hip and he's had to stop doing it. Yeah, just get up on the sink. She'll be apples. These examples are just the tip of the iceberg. Not a day goes by when we are not fielding complaint after complaint about this. And my office is not the only one. Many people go to Facebook and all the sites to have a whinge about it. <laughs> no wonder. And when we refer to the complaints to the NBN, they're obliging, but they can only follow their writing instructions. They're constrained. Of course they're constrained. Can I just say to you that this government, like attracts like, they are like copper. They bend under pressure. They melt when the heat's on and they've lost their lustre quickly. This is a patch-up. This is a stitch-up of all Australians. I say to you that this government talks innovation, but it only delivers frustration. I call the member for Forrest. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. And it's interesting the theme of this, uh, this uh, MPI about being second-rate. Well, nothing was as second-rate as what was Labor's absolute dog's breakfast of an NBN rollout. And what we saw at the election was that construction had actually stopped completely. That's how, that's how good it was that it had stopped. And instead, as we saw, of building in areas where there, were, um, where there was a real need, they were actually overbuilding in areas that had 100 megabits uh, already available. And in Western Australia, in my seat of forest at the time of the election, there were zero NBN connections. Zero. Now, that's what you call second rate. And of course, we've, uh, uh, this government has prioritised underserviced areas like the rural and regional area of forest. And my area in the southwest of WA has been a major beneficiary of investment in communications, and we are delivering better broadband sooner to the southwest. Unlike the Labor Party's pie in the sky proposal, and it was, because we were looking at construction in my area at least into the next decade. Today, today, my region has towers going up and boxes being built on street corners. Of the 62,000 or so premises on the NBN rollout plan, there are currently some 35,000 premises in forest that have access to the NBN, of which close to 10,000 have taken up um, NBN services. The major vast majority of these have fibre to the premises connectivity. Around 7,300 premises in the Greater Bunbury area are in the process of getting access to the NBN, with construction on the fibre to the node now, uh, network now well underway. Well, it's a really important milestone because uh, we had zero when Labor was in government. We've got greater certainty for homes and businesses, and uh, as those switch to fast broadband in the suburbs of Usher and Withers, of South Bunbury, College Grove, Dalyalup, Jalora. South Bunbury and Kerry Park. And final network designs are now complete, and we've already seen NBN subcontractors in streets in other areas of Bunbury. And of course, the NBN rollout plan will identify at least 55,000 premises that will soon be able to access the NBN by fixed line technology and extra uh, additional premises through wireless and also through satellite. So, Mr Deputy Speaker, the Bustleton region has um, and will see even more people accessing the NBN much faster than previously thought, with a total of 16,600 premises that have or will soon uh, receive access to fixed line um, and uh, another 2,500 with wireless access. Now, there are two people in the chamber today, David and Rosemary Ryan of Bustleton. And when we um, uh, got into government, Mr Deputy Speaker, and the NBN started to roll out in their area of Bustleton, they accessed the service and are extremely happy with the result. So um, when we talk about second rate, what was second rate was the fact that they didn't have a service before we got into government. And it's great to see the interim satellites that were launched and now the Sky Muster satellites, the second only last week, providing much better services through regional and remote areas for regional and remote users. And I saw in a press release the Shire of Capel Council President Murray Scott, who said about the NBN it being a vital piece of infrastructure for the Shire of Capel, providing enhanced connectivity for those who live and work in the region. That's what we didn't have under Labor. He said that residents in the Shire's rural locations, not overbuilding, 
in areas that already have access to fast broadband, like Labor, will have at least the option of a fast internet service to cater for their family needs and home businesses. And, uh, it would, um, I saw that uh, Regional Development Australia Executive Officer Charles Jenkins said the South West is going through a period of unprecedented economic population and tourism growth, and the access to better broadband gives local businesses the opportunity to improve productivity through internet-enabled innovation, market the region as a tourist destination through social media, and open up opportunities for online wine sales both domestically and internationally. Well, in my electorate of Forest, Mr Deputy Speaker, we would have been waiting at least another 10 years at best for these types of services that were going to be delivered by Labor. That's what you call second rate. I call the member for Bert. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. I had an early uni job at working as an on-site technician for IINET. And working through the period of the old dial-up modem and the introduction of DSL, I have to say that my excitement at Labor's NBN program when announced was sky high, although it has now come crashing down over the last three years as the Luddites on the other side of this chamber have trashed the NBN with their copper fetish, delays, cost blowouts, aka broadband. I've said it before and I'll say it again in this place now. If the Prime Minister had been in charge in the 1850s and 60s, Australia would never have gotten the telegraph. He would have been telling us that the mail services were more than sufficient. But as they say, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Because in the 1953 maiden speech of a certain E.G. Whitlam, he raised concerns that the number of unsatisfied telephone applications due to the then government cuts causing a three-year delay on the completion of new telephone exchanges. Sixty years may have passed for the residents of Australia's outer suburbs, but it may seem like for them that we're still stuck in the 1950s with a Liberal government that refuses to meet the needs for 21st century internet access. Mr Deputy Speaker, according to some results published in the West Australian, Perth is officially Australia's broadband wasteland. Perth's 7.1 megabit figure of average internet access speed is slower than Indonesia's average download speed and well below the national average. In fact, even those great uh, sometime Liberal supporters, the WA Chamber of Commerce and Industry, have said that internet reliability is a major issue for WA business. This year I was contacted uh, by a Thornley business in my electorate resurfacing WA. Sharon and Greg need to send and receive high-resolution images in order to be able to provide quotes for their customers for kitchen and bathroom renovation. It's a fantastic small business, Mr Deputy Speaker. It's employing a handful of people in Perth South East, which is vitally important as we are a high unemployment area. But resurfacing at WA has hit a snag. Thornley is one of those unlucky suburbs that's been entirely left off the MBN rollout plan. Homes and businesses to the south, west and north of Thornley at least have a glimmer on the horizon. They have, still have to wait a number of years to receive their fraud ban, but at least they are on the rollout. Not so for Thornley. But like in older suburbs across Australia, the existing copper and exchange infrastructure in Thornley is failing. It is failing to provide adequate ADSL internet access. So for Sharon and Greg, this means running a business from home is almost impossible. The snail speed internet means that they can't even get their email to work on occasion, so they're relying on 4G phone hotspots, which is an, enormal, an enormous financial impost to their business. It also goes without saying that MBN would actually fix this mix, mess if it worked. But I have to say that I've gone into bat for Thornley. I've arranged to have meetings with MBN Co, hoping that they could provide some clarification to this mess. And I've asked them why has Thornley been left off the rollout plan? And their response, they blame Telstra. They tell me that it's up to Telstra to get the exchange ready to hand over to them and that they're waiting for that to be dealt with before they can put it into their rollout plan. Ah, but when I go and talk to Telstra, Mr Deputy Speaker, they say, oh no, it's NBN Co's fault. They blame NBN Co because they say they set the timetable and it turns out NBN Co haven't even asked to have that exchange put onto the rollout plan. This is completely unacceptable. So while NBN Co and Telstra bicker and play a blame shifting game, Sharon and Greg can't even get to send an email and their business is hurting because of it. In 2013, Malcolm Turnbull promised that every household and business in Australia would have MBN by the end of 2016, and the areas with the worst broadband would be prioritised first. Well, indeed, only a handful of areas in Burt are going to have any hope of MBN by the end of 2016. Homes and businesses across Burt have been forgotten by the Turnbull government's MBN, and to add insult to injury, 
Cecil Andrews Senior High School in Seville Grove in my electorate, a STEM specialty school which was much fated by the government during the recent election, is in one of these areas. And while it's moved all of its students over to tablets, it's of no use because the internet connectivity of the school is pretty much useless. We also have the Forestdale Business Park, a new industrial development in my electorate. One of my constituents recently contacted me because they found that his business is in an internet black hole. He's been left without internet at all. No copper, no fibre. The business park is due to be connected to the MBN apparently in a matter of months, but under the infrastructure provider of last resort and universal service obligations, MBN Co has a clear responsibility to provide an interim solution until there's a fixed line rollout for that business park, but they have been ignoring this responsibility. This is the model that the Turnbull government has fostered, customer last, and now it's costing us $54 billion. In a 21st century economy, Reliable internet is not a luxury, it is a necessity for our homes, education and for business, but 20th century internet access appears, appears to be all we are getting. Order. I call the member for Clare. Thank you, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker. It's a, uh, a great pleasure to be able to make a contribution to this uh, matter of uh, public importance. I think it's fair to say that the manner in which this MPI has been brought to this place uh, has been very churlish and very negative by the member for Greenway. No, it, has been, it has been negative and it has been churlish, full of confected outrage that it was. But uh, although, although I, do give, I, do give, I do give the member for Patterson some credit, Mr Deputy Speaker, because although I did not agree with the word she said, she at least used some rhyme in an MPI speech, and you don't hear that very often in Parliament, Mr Deputy Speaker. But despite the churlish display from the member for Greenway, and the very negative, uh, negative nature in which it was brought to this place, there is a silver lining because it gives me a great opportunity, Mr Deputy Speaker, to tell the House about some of the wonderful things that are happening with the NBN rollout in regional Australia. And, and there was no greater example of that than last week, Mr Deputy Speaker, when the NBN network was officially switched on in the great city of Orange. And I was there for that occasion, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, where 9,250 homes and businesses in Orange uh, were officially uh, connected to the NBN last week, and the remaining 9,800 homes and businesses will be uh, progressively uh, be able to connect over the next month. So that's terrific news for our area. Now, those new homes and businesses join about 3,500 premises, Mr. Deputy Speaker, that are already connected around uh, the city of Orange, including Glenroy. Uh, Lucknow, March, Orange West, Spring Creek, Spring Hill Town, uh, and many others as well. And there are also many, many other people in our area who are now eligible to connect to the NBN through SkyMuster, and we're all very excited about that. So by November, by November, Mr. Deputy Speaker, yep, the confected outrage continues, Mr. Deputy Speaker. But despite the confected outrage, by November the rollout of the NBN uh, on the Orange network will be complete, with more than 19,000 Orange homes and businesses able to access fast and reliable broadband. And it's important for regional Australia, Mr Deputy Speaker, because it's all about, as the member for Hume uh, nods in agreement, he knows, he knows how important it is, because it's all, because it's all, no, 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 no he's solid, the member for Hume. It's all about bridging the great divide between, between the city and the country, Mr Deputy Speaker. It's all about bridging that great divide and bridging the tyranny of distance. And where did we have this launch in Orange, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker? But it was at a company called Focus. Now, Focus, uh, their business is selling cloud-based data analytics software. And uh, it's a great new high-tech company in, in Orange. Uh, they currently employ 110 people with 35 staff in Orange, but they actually want to double that, Mr Deputy Speaker. And now, and now that Orange is connected to the NBN network, they will be able to do that, supplying uh, and, and developing and growing regional jobs in our area. And, uh, for example, uh, I had the pleasure of meeting uh, the Focus CEO Phil Dodds there uh, and one of his support managers, uh, Anthony D'Amico, a local, a local man uh, who has uh, uh, finished high school and now working through uh, as the, the focus support manager. Now, this is a company, Mr. Deputy Speaker, uh, that services its software all around the world from Orange. So it's an international company doing all of this from Orange in regional New South Wales, all made possible by the NBN. It doesn't, 
It, yeah, we back them. We back them and we support them, and we want more of them to come to country New South Wales. CEO Phil Dodd said to me, he said, I could have set this business up anywhere in this country, but I chose Orange, and as long as the NBN was there, we'll be able to develop the business here and continue to grow it. So it's wonderful news for country. It's wonderful news for country uh, New South Wales and country Australia. It's a wonderful thing. And Mr Deputy Speaker, I mean, you could, have, you could imagine what a disaster it would have been had the other side had control of uh, such a huge project. We all, remember, we all remember the building the education revolution. We've all got school halls which are overpriced and too small, not fit for purpose, the pink bats. You name it, Mr Deputy Speaker. But it's not just about high-tech companies. For mining, we are a major mining centre. Mr. Deputy Speaker, we've got the world's, uh, sorry, Australia's largest gold mine right on the fringes of Orange. Health. Uh, Orange is a major health hub with uh, all over Western New South Wales. Uh, they are linked up through the internet into Orange so that uh, the professionals in Orange can provide mental health advice. Uh, the physicians are all connected as well uh, through that network. So it is very important for regional Australia. And so despite the churlish display by the members uh, opposite. We are delighted that the NBN is rolling out through country Australia. Before, before I call the member for Longman, I'll remind members, uh, while this is a free-ranging debate, uh, it is, the exuberance is taking off, uh, I'll remind the shadow minister and the member for Whitlam that using your uh, hands as a megaphone is unparliamentary behaviour. I call the member for Longman. Mr. Speaker. Mr Speaker, Malcolm Turnbull came into government with a promise to get every Australian on the NBN by the end of 2016. Not very far away. He promised the NBN would be sooner, he promised it would be faster and he promised it would be cheaper. And What a colossal disappointment he has been. His hypocrisy is now being exposed at every single turn. He is committing a fraud on the Australian people and he is trying to jeopardise our economic future by saddling Australia with second-rate copper and second-rate infrastructure. And if, and if we're talking about copper, I might add that the Minister for Regional Communities, Senator Nash, said the copper age was 5,300 years ago. That is where copper belongs. We need to embrace optic fibre, wireless and satellites so that we have the right mix of infrastructure to take us into the future. Well, Mr Deputy Speaker, I don't believe the minister has yet hugged this supposed right mix of infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And why? Because it just doesn't exist. That's right. mm -hmm. Well, I'm all too ready to e embrace infrastructure, Mr Speaker, but there has to be something to hug in the first place. Right. The Australian people recognise this focus on a second-rate copper and second-rate infrastructure simply represents a lack of vision. In fact, uh, our recent essential poll of Liberal, Labor and Greens voters reported that barely one in five Australians that's one in five, considered the NBN to be adequate to meet our future needs. And actually what I can say is that that dissatisfaction rate in my electorate of Longman is actually significantly higher. In fact, I can inform the House that at least one third of all of the constituents who call my office, phone or email or walk through that door, are seeking help with their substandard connection. Wow. Well, I know this government struggles to do their number, Mr Deputy Speaker, but they should at least realise that a dissatisfaction rate of 70 per cent is dire. That's right. So take Nigel, for example. So, so Nigel lives in Ningi. Ningi is a really small, beautiful place in between Caboolture and uh, Bribie Island. It's a really beautiful place. It's the sort of place where, where lots of people are moving to. Um, unfortunately for Nigel and for many other Australians who live in new premises, the NBN node is installed at the top of his street. Now, the surrounding streets and his neighbours are all connected to the NBN, but guess what? Nigel's house is not. Mm. Mr. Yeah, Nigel. Mr. Deputy Speaker, he was told that this was due to the placement of the node. His provider said that the reason for the, was for the poor infrastructure. It took five months, Mr. Deputy Speaker, five months before it was resolved. Shame. Such delays are not acceptable, and they are most certainly not indicative of a forward-looking technology. So let me tell you about Stephen. The situation is even worse for Stephen. Let me tell you about him. He lives in Caboolture, not far from Nigel and Ningi. He reviewed the NBN rollout map 
And then he, uh, then he was advised by the NBN Co that it was all systems go. He was pretty happy, right? Needs the NBN. Unfortunately, Stephen subsequently received a phone call saying, guess what? No infrastructure exists. There were no nodes, no hub in place. Shame. It would not be possible for him to connect via the NBN. Mr Deputy Speaker, I might observe that information on this rollout map, well, it looks pretty lovely, right? It's got pretty colours, interactivity. I mean, it's positively 21st century, but there's one small problem. It's not accurate. That's right. This government must stop wasting money on superficialities and just focus on the basics. The basics. We want affordable, high-speed internet with reliable connection. That's, That's right. all we want. Yeah, just the basic, right? right? The people of Longman deserve better infrastructure for the 21st century. They currently have infrastructure that's reminiscent of the 1990s. So whether it's Burpengary or Bribey Island, or Morayfield or Caboolture or Woodford, whether it's a small business or a student or one of our retirees, from the central coast of regional Australia, this government has shown that it does not care about the lived experience of people in Longman and indeed the rest of Australia. Right. It's treated them with contempt, and that's shame, Mr Complete Deputy contempt. Speaker, shame. shame. Here, here. Here, here. I call the member for Groom. Uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, it's a pleasure to rise and participate in this MPI debate. And as I do so, I reflect uh, upon some of the contributions of those opposite and note that whilst they've acknowledged, particularly NBN Co, a number of times, they clearly don't listen, and it's proven that they don't study their progress reports. So, Mr Deputy Speaker, it's important that we return to the facts on this matter. Across all NBN technologies, as evidenced in the last NBN progress report, around 90,000 homes and businesses have purchased an NBN connection over the past four weeks. That compares, as we heard earlier, to just 51,000 paying customers on the NBN during Labor's six years in government. So almost twice achieved by the coalition government in four weeks to that that Labor achieved in six years. Today, one in every four Australian premises, that's 3.2 million, are now able to purchase a connection to the NBN compared to just one in every 50 or 300,000 at the time that the coalition came into government three years ago. Now, Mr Deputy Speaker, as the Prime Minister updated the House earlier, half of Australian households, households will be connected by June 17. Three quarters by June 2018, completed therefore by 2020. Now, the Prime Minister quite, quite correctly reflected upon that as a tremendous corporate turnaround versus the catastrophe that we saw under Labor. The coalition is achieving a cost-effective approach, utilising available technology and, of course, infrastructure. Labor would have cost us, would have cost Australians another $30 billion and taken six years longer. And Mr Deputy Speaker, the coalition's approach, as I said, is based on a practical uh, and cost-effective one that utilises state-of-the-art uh, technology available across the modes that are being uh, put out to Australian householders and uh, businesses. Now, Mr Deputy Speaker, that is particularly important uh, across regional areas such, that I, such as that that I represent uh, in Groom. Uh, the Prime Minister stated uh, back in February 2012 that Labor, quite rightly, he stated that Labor had failed to explore all of the available options for providing broadband across Australia, but most particularly in the bush. He made it clear from opposition that we would not compromise in the objective of delivering fast broadband to all Australians wherever they lived, and uh, we have clearly been fulfilling that promise. Now, in the electorate of Groom, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, I am so thrilled that construction works began in the village of Kingsthorpe outside Toowoomba just last month. Last month and they uh, are expected to start in the neighbouring townships of Oakey and Cambuie before the end of the year. Now, this signals a concerted push into the rural areas of my electorate. The next construction phase will see a further 4,000 premises being able to access 
the end by, NBN by the end of the year through various uh, modes. Now, Mr Deputy Speaker, the initial time for works uh, to be finalised in Groom was 2020, but under the Turnbull government we have accelerated works such that the entire Groom electorate to, to order an NBN service will be able to do so by the end of next year. Now, we are, therefore, in Groom, in the Toowoomba region, one of the most connected regional areas in Australia. And I say, Mr Deputy Speaker, to those opposite who I would suggest collectively have neither an understanding or an appreciation of regional Australia, that that means a tremendous opportunity for Toowoomba businesses, for Darling Downs businesses, which now have, an endless possibilities, uh, have endless possibilities for growth and innovation using the NBN network. That together with roads, airports, inland rail adds to the infrastructure that people in our electorate of Groom uh, can benefit from. That is an example of the, the uh, Turnbull coalition government implementing state-of-the-art solutions, affordable and practical solutions in our approach to the national broadband network. I thank the member for Groom. The discussion has concluded. I call the member